ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning. Kane Sport. It's December 3rd, 2021. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com, joined as always by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day. And Matt, once again, I don't think anybody could care five flying diddlies about the news of the day. Uh, they want to know what the heck is going on at the U. It has been utter chaos for the last 48 hours. And, um, it was, it was so crazy, we couldn't even do Good Morning Kane Sport yesterday because, you know, we didn't know what the heck to say. I mean, it, it was just, um, there was just so many rumors flying around, so much banter on Twitter. Um, everybody seems to be weighing in on this situation these days, whether they're local, national. Um, people that don't even cover the team really on a regular basis are now... Uh, proclaiming themselves experts on what's going on. There's leaks left and right. Uh, so it's been a lot of work to get a handle on everything, but uh, I figured we might as well now try to pull it all together because it is Friday morning. And Canes fans, uh, I'm not going to go totally out on the limb because I don't want to be wrong about anything I say, um, but I feel fairly confident, Matt, that the next 48 hours or so, um, 48 to to, uh, 72 hours, I would say, are going to be a roller coaster ride for the Canes fan. Uh, I think it's going to get very interesting. And that's because I think there's going to be clarity on everything that everybody's been wondering about. Um, There's going to be clarity on Manny Diaz and whether he lives on into the future. There's going to be clarity on uh, how the pursuit of Mario Cristobal has gone and there is going to be clarity on whether Miami will fire Manny Diaz and embark on an overall coaching search. Um, and those, those are the three scenarios that we've set are at play, Matt. I'm going to talk a little bit about them as well, but uh, just first your overall thoughts on the last say 48 hours and just the other insanity of everything that's been going on. My overall thoughts, geez, okay. Way to narrow it down for me. Um, well, I gotta let you talk, so I, 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 wanna, I don't want to ramble. They'll start jumping on, uh, jumping on me if I ramble. Yeah, so. But this is one of those things where just interrupt yeah. me because I could talk for a half an hour. So I mean, okay. So the way I explain it to to my friends who ask me like, what's going on? It's, it's like this is the best analogy I give them. Is like you have your favorite series on TV. Like for you, I know it's The Bachelorette, right? So your favorite series. <laughs> that you watch on TV and like you watch season one, you watch season two, you watch season three, you love this show. And like after season three, you know, they say, okay, the new season, you know, after this huge cliffhanger after season three, the new show is coming out on Monday at 7 p.m. So, you know, be sure to watch whatever, right? 7 p.m. you put it on they're like, oh, it's been delayed another hour. 8 p.m. you check, 9 p.m. you check, 10 p.m. It's still not happening. And you're like, you get angry after a while, right? And that's what I see with these fans. They're like angry. They're so angry. And you you and I talked about it yesterday. Like, you know, we have a difference of opinion on how it was handled. But I think we agree that they are taking their time and trying to do it right and getting to the right result. And I think we both agree that if the right result is reached for athletic director, maybe a number two below him and the head coach, I think this all goes away like, like that. Like that new episode came out. And it's the greatest episode you've ever seen, that first episode off that cliffhanger, and you're just like, this is awesome. And you forget all the bad stuff. I wanted to curse, but I didn't. All the bad stuff that happened before. So now with that said, I'm going to move to a, to, to really, you know, sort of answer your question from my perspective of the last 48 hours. Like, you know, we've both been talking to different people that we know. You know, we've, you've been doing this longer than I have, but we've both, both been doing it for too long. So we've, we've met a lot of people that we trust and that trust us. And one of the more interesting information tidbits that I got that we talked about um, the other day was, you know, the, it, it, it really is, as weird as it sounds, I mean, it's a, it's a business decision for Miami. This is not, and I wish it was about the fans, it's not about the fans, because when you look at the people that are running the search, they're business people, okay? 
And when push comes to shove, this university is not about giving away money and just to make people happy on the outside. This is a university that needs to make money to function correctly. And they started to finally, they had, they had, I don't think people knew this, but they had, you know, salary freezes for a long time. They have facilities that are not, you know, they've upgraded them, but they're not still not competing with the top programs in the country. Um, they need to redo the Hex Center, from what I was told. They need to redo um, the wellness center. It's just a bunch of stuff that needs to be totally redone. And, you know, it's interesting because after Blake James was, was fired, I was told that there, there was a meeting with some of these top people at different departments. How much money do you need to get it right? So we're the Alabamas and Clemsons of the world and we're not, you know, the dregs of society <laughs> anymore, right. so to speak. And they finally come up with a number and the number was, from what I was told, was $10 million. And that's for one budget year to, to get things right. And that's not nothing. And, and, and then when you factor in all these other programs that lose money, tennis, uh, you go down the list, you know, um, various sports in, in men's and women's sports that lose money, they have to pay for their coaches. They have to pay for a lot of their facilities that need to be done and, and, and upgraded. So like the, the, the ticket price that I was told, you know, over several years is $100 million, not even including football salaries. So it's a lot of money. So this is what these two guys who are in charge of this thing have to figure out. Is the upside of getting, let's say, a Mario Cristobal in here, and hopefully he can get this program winning games and getting that excitement back in the program and having fans buying merchandise and going to games and buying concessions and da 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 da. Does that make up and even make more money than the status quo? And I believe that the answer they came up with is yes, because you and I have both heard very positive things that there will be a change. However, like you said, this is not a definite thing. It's not done yet. You know, things. T's have to be crossed. The I's have to be dotted. You know, I, I, I've seen things fall apart right. that are just as far along as I think this one is. And uh, yeah, I'm not taking anything for granted um, at all. And I'm going to talk about why in a minute. But, right. but uh, yeah, the, no, right. the good news is that the formula that they used to say, are we going to make money by hiring somebody else and winning a championship and competing for national championships? The answer came back. Yes, we will make more money than we will, than we will make if we keep the status quo. So I would have to think whether it's this year or next year, there will be a change. I mean, it can't stay the way it is. And you have to think they'll do it sooner rather than later because another year like this, they're going to lose a fortune and they may lose uh, viewership and interest in people coming to the stadium, possibly permanently un until, <laughs> until and if the program reaches that pinnacle again. Whereas you make the change now, I think there'll be a lot of excitement. So possibly yeah. optimistic that they're heading in the right direction on my end. All right. So let's start with the, the AD search. And um, I thought there was a decent chance maybe they could get it done by today. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen right now. I guess it still could. Um, I think that's going into at least next week. So the trustees that wanted the athletic director in place before football decisions were made – are going to probably end up being disappointed. Uh, I don't see how, un unless something happened late last night, they're going to do something today. Uh, I don't see how they're going to meet that deadline. They just can't linger on any longer. Okay, it, it, this weekend is, I mean, it's, what do you want? I don't, I don't know if, if I would call it D-Day or whatever, but um, this weekend is when something's going to give. I, I, I mean, I, I, I absolutely believe that because, you're going to be, what, about 10 days till signing day. Manny Diaz has been out all week recruiting. He's telling every kid he goes to visit that he's coming back. And they have some official visitors this weekend, too. So, like, the, the show has gone on through all of the um, goings-on behind the scenes in the AD search. And uh, I don't think it could go on any longer if Manny Diaz is not going to be the head coach. So, um I, you might, I see, I already see you're like jumping out of your skin there, Matt, but, but I mean, I guess it could, I mean, I guess, you could, smiling and, and oh, I mean, maybe you'll disagree with me, but I, I mean, I, I think that, that this weekend that has to be clarified regardless of what happens um, on the other issue. I'm going to talk about it in a minute with Mario Cristobal. And um, I think Miami's going to find out very, very quickly after, tonight's Pac-12 title game, whether they're going to be able to land Mario Cristobal. Um, this is not like 
something that's going to take very long. Uh, you know, I, I think that there is a firm plan in place. I think they know what what the terms of the deal will be. And I think it's going to be a matter of whether Mario Cristobal um, will come to Miami. And I don't see why that answer is going to linger very long. So I'm I'm thinking that by Saturday that Miami's going to know whether that's a possibility. Now, here's what I think is going to happen. I think that game is going to end tonight in Las Vegas. And if it hasn't happened already, I think Nike's are Phil Knight is going to dump a freaking boatload of cash um, through the athletic department, of course. But I, I think a massive offer is going to be made to Mario Cristobal to stay uh, at Oregon. And, and I think that the dollar amount is going to exceed the Miami offer. And um, I think that at that point, it's just, it's going to be a decision on, on, you know, go or stay. And like I said, I don't think it's going to take a long time. I don't see this lingering. Um, I also don't know that Miami would move on Manny before they got that answer for several reasons. Um, you know, for starters, if they can't lure a needle mover, which I hope everybody agrees with me that Mario Cristobal would be, uh, then I'm not sure that they that they would terminate Manny. Um, I don't know that they would terminate Manny to go into a general coaching search. That'll be a decision they have to make if they're presented with that. Um, but the other reason that I think everybody has to remember, and this has been being debated for a while now, because a lot of people thought that Manny should have been fired after the two and four start. Um, the thing I think that a lot of people aren't taking into consideration, Matt, is that players have open transfer options. Like Corey Gaynor announced today, uh, or rather yesterday, that he's going into the transfer portal. Now, if they had made that move in the middle of the season, that's six, seven weeks that all these other schools around the country would have had to reach out to the camps of all the players on Miami roster and try to get them to go into the transfer portal so they can come to their schools. By maintaining the status quo, by letting Manny Diaz finish the season, I think they warded off a lot of that. Now, the second that Manny Diaz would be terminated, that all has the possibility of starting. And they need to be able to, it needs to be a bang, bang, bang. You know, it needs to all happen very quickly um, because if Mario Cristobal were going to come to Miami, he would need to secure the roster very quickly and um, make sure that, that he makes contact with all of the key members of the current team uh, to reassure them and, and try to uh, ward off any exodus into the transfer portal that potentially could take place. So these are all, I'm, I'm bringing all this up because there's all these things going on that I don't think um, would necessarily come to the minds initially of, of, of some of the fans. And um, this is how I think it's going to play out this weekend. And uh, those of you on the message boards that are on our site at canesport.com, uh, I think you know by now where I stand on this issue. I think you know what I believe is going to happen. But as you know, we've been through this before. These things, the deal is not a deal till it's a deal, okay? And 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 we are going to treat this very delicately at Kane Sport because we don't want to be wrong on this. And, uh, you know, when when we know that there's a deal that has pen has met paper, that is when we will report it. I'm telling you that right now. We will not report it prematurely. Um, and um, we fully respect the power, the influence, and the respect that Phil Knight and Oregon rightfully have earned, not just in this situation, but in the commitment that they make to their program, to facilities, to NIL, to everything else. It's a, it's a very well-oiled machine out there. Uh, hopefully Miami will be becoming something similar in the very near future um, in terms of the, the Miami viewpoint. Um, but right now that is a very well oiled machine, Matt, that I think everybody's got to respect and, and, and a deal is not a deal until it's a deal.
Yeah, well, I mean, you've touched on about 10 different subjects I would have weighed in on, but now I did keep some notes just so I could- Have at it, man. I'm just trying to lay it all out there. You I'll, know? Go from the, I'll go from the back to the front. So most recently, um, I guess, I, you know, I never made a secret of it that if, if, if I was the president of the University of Miami, which I'm sure I will be someday in my dreams, um, I would have removed Manny or at least announced that there would be a new coach back and let him just stay as, as the coach. And I mentioned why before. I'm not going to rehash all that. Um, not, not least of which is just to, to make sure that they knew that, you know, you're not bringing Manny back when you know it's the wrong fit. Um, you know, and then, but, but I do agree with you. I, I think the transfer portal aspect of it is huge. And I hadn't really thought about that until we talked about it yesterday. And remember, Mario's not available until Saturday. I understand. Yeah. So I, I do, but, but at the same time, <laughs> I don't think Miami had the transfer portal in mind when they were having a discussion, should we or shouldn't we keep Manny right now? You know, they, so like, that they, was they, they, if they were I think, smart. I think, well, in, in retrospect, if everything works out and Manny's the coach and they, uh, and Mario's the coach and they get a great athletic director, maybe it'll have, they'll have lucked into it. But I don't think they thought about the transfer portal when they were saying, Let's not make any announcement and just keep Manny. Because I think if Manny had lost some of these other games, if, if he didn't win five of the last six, I don't think they had a choice. I, I, don't, I don't think they were thinking about transfer portal. I think they were thinking about optics and fans. Because this is a political institution at the end of the day. you know. So anyway, I don't think they were thinking about the transfer portal. Moving on from that subject. Um, they should have been. Yeah, but I don't think they were. I, don't think, I think that was probably at the bottom of their list of big. Why, it's a huge why, issue. Or not. Huge issue. Yeah, but the kids already transferred. I mean, you saw kids, Gervin and however many kids, Corey Gaynor just transferred. Like, the kids didn't not transfer. Like, the kids who are starters here and like it here, you know, yes, you have a mass exodus last year at places like Michigan State, but look what they did. Like, you know, that's not the, the concern to me at a program with a floundering coach and a floundering program isn't, oh, my God, transfers might leave. Because if your team's that bad – you're going to want to get rid of the bad players anyway, you know, and usually it's not the stars that are leaving because, you know, they'll, they'll wait around and see, I mean, they're not going to look for a new home and a new system and, this, and not know what their deal is. They know they're a star here, but let's move on. Uh, but uh, just so you understand, I'm talking about like other schools trying to come after Leonard Taylor, James Williams, oh, Cam. I understand, but, well, and first of all, I, you, and I know, you and I both know that's illegal. Uh, I'm sure they would still do it through back doors, just as some programs we know have done with other kids. But like, whatever. I'm not going to start speculating on who would have left or wouldn't have left. I mean, let's move on from that. So, you know, you were mentioning something at one point about, you know, the next 48 to 72 hours having something done with it with the coaching situation, one way or the other. And um, you know, the funny thing to me is we reported yesterday about how Manny has planned now this. <laughs> this visit to California to see this offensive lineman on Sunday with yeah. Gary Justice. And like I posted on the message board yesterday, I'm like, what if, you know, in that, in that 48 to 72 hour time window, what if he's already like heading to California or whatever happens on Monday while he's still in California? Do they even pay them for him to fly back? Is he like stuck in California? Who was it? Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's like James Comey, the former FBI director. Remember when he was on a trip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was talking Arizona. to and, and he finds out uh, during the flight that he's fired. Right. right. Yeah. Somebody, on the, somebody on the message board thread wrote, because uh, the kid he's going to see is Jackson Brown. And somebody said, Jackson Brown's, you know, hit song, The Pretender, like, this is perfect, you know? <laughs> and then he's going to see Jackson <laughs> Brown in California gets stuck there. The Pretender gets stuck there. All right. Next subject. Um, you mentioned Mario Cristobal and Phil Knight throwing a ton of money at him, okay? If Miami yeah. did not learn... From the last time they let Mario Cristobal leave, and for those of you that have only been fans recently, you probably don't know this. Hopefully most of you do. Mario Cristobal was hired at Miami and lasted maybe two weeks because Alabama paid him a little bit more money. And Miami did it. Okay, a lot more money. Well, it's all relative. Nowadays, it's not a lot more money. Back then, it was considered a lot more money. I think it was 500 grand more. Okay. Well, I don't, you know. Okay. And it was the opportunity to work for Nick Saban. Hey, you can't say no. Okay. Well, my point is, if Miami didn't learn from that and isn't willing, like Mario comes in and says, oh my God, you know, Phil Knight's giving me 10% stake in Nike and, uh, <laughs> you know, he's giving me, he's gifting me his private plane, whatever the hell it is. If Miami just says, well, that's all we can do is the amount we offered you, like, then they haven't learned. If Miami wins out, that will show this is a different program, that they have learned, that they will not just keep doing the same old, same old. And we're going to, the exciting thing is we're going to know in the next two to three days, like, is this the same old Miami or is this, a, I don't like to say the new Miami. I will never say that. So is this I, the old Miami? I wrestle with that a little, Matt. Is this the old Miami? Because they have to learn what it takes to win championships again. They have to relearn it, you know. 
Um, and I, this is the first step. The first step I is don't know. I don't know that there's going to. Well, let me just say one thing. I don't think there's. I don't know that there's going to be an appetite to get into a bidding war with Phil Knight. I mean, it's uh, not a bidding war. You have to make it palatable to Mario and show that you want him. Because if you make, I think, that's, offer, I think that it's taken, it's it hasn't been done. Will be done very quickly. Yeah, but I just if take if you take or leave it to Mario, like uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, he might be yeah, happy with a certain number, and then all of a sudden, Phil Knight has a much bigger number. And he might take less to go to Miami, but how much less will he take? He left for five hundred grand. I understand it's saving, but still, Miami was his home. His mom was here. He left for five hundred grand. So, but I, but I think it was more than the money. I think it was the opportunity to work for Nick Saban, and it was a brilliant move. It it it, it uh, transformed him as a coach. It made him it made him so much better. Uh, and yeah, he's correct. got the whole blueprint. And correct. And you can argue that he might listen. This is sad but true. Oregon right now probably has a better chance of making the playoffs every year over the next three to four years than Miami does because he's built that roster. Miami does not, you know, Miami has one good class on its roster right now. A very short amount of time as he comes here to try and put together a recruiting class. He's going to have to get a bunch of transfers that's making an older roster a little bit harder to, to really turn that over. Um, Two years. Yeah, if everything goes perfectly and if he keeps all the top local kids home, which, you know, maybe he can. He's the guy who can, if anyone can do it, he can. But they've been leaving for over a decade, the top local kids. You know, are they still going to say no to Alabama and Clemson because Mario's at Miami? Maybe, you know. But, but you know, you're saying that, like, Miami has so much more to offer than, than Oregon. No, it's, 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 this is home. And, it's, and it was home when he left for Alabama over 500 grand. And at the end of the day, you know, does he take the money and the better roster? Or did he come home? And last time he made this decision, he didn't stay home. So that's all I'm saying. That's why I'm at 80%. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I don't disrespect the power of Phil Knight and the power of Oregon and and what I believe they are going to do uh, the minute that Miami calls up and gives that courtesy phone call and says, we are interested in talking to Mario. Um, you know, I they're going to be ready. I mean, they're not going to be blindsided by that, I assure you. And, um, you know, to me, that's the 20 percent of that I feel could potentially hold up this from happening. And um, otherwise, I think it's going to happen. And I and, and, and I think while it's it, that would be bad for Manny Diaz, um, I think that there has to be a recognition that if you have the opportunity to upgrade and, and give yourself a chance to um, create that separation that I've been talking about. Uh, because you can recruit better, because you can attract better coaches, because you can um, put together a better program. Uh, you have to do it. And Miami has to be all in on this. Uh, this is, this, you know, with a new AD coming in and, and everything, this is an opportunity here. You got a budget commitment from the university. I mean, this is the time. If Miami is going to save Miami from what Miami has done to itself over the last 15, 20 years, this is the moment, Matt. And um, yeah, I mean, I just think it's just, I, I just still, I can't listen. I understand the arguments for why you, you cut Manny based on the transfer portal or whatever, but like some of the reasons why I would have got rid of him, you know, among them, aside from it being the right thing to do, um, because it, it seems like the right thing to do for the program, but it's also the right thing to do for Manny. It's the right thing to do for recruiting. It's like embarrassing for this program to have Manny right now on the road recruiting and getting asked by every single parent, kid, and coach. Are you coming back? And, you know, the weird thing to me, which we also talked about yesterday, you know, because I talked to a ton of recruits, like, oh, uh, until yesterday, every recruit and family member I talked to and, and high school coach, you know, Manny comes up with these standard lines, right? You guys hear him on Monday mornings on QAM. He repeats the same lines in the afternoon, you know, when he's asked these questions about, like, you know, anything. It's always, oh, we're just looking at the next game. Oh, we're just playing hard. So his party line up until yesterday had been when recruits, parents, coached to ask him about his status, no coach, he would say no coach can guarantee they're going to be anywhere for three or four years. You have to fix the program, you know, um, blah, 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 blah. That was his line. And yesterday, all of a sudden, his line changed. And he started telling people that he's gotten some assurances that he's going to be back, which is super weird that he's decided to say that now. I don't think it's necessarily true. I reported on that I think, like 10 days ago. I don't think it's true, but it just adds another layer to this, like, what the hell is going on? And and you and I disagree on this. Like, I'm big on perception. You're big on behind the scenes and that they're doing it right behind the scenes. Like, to me, 
you should be doing it right and people should know you're doing it right you know and yeah a lot gets swept under the rug when they hire the right person at the end of the day and they hire the right athletic director at the end of the day everyone's like okay it all worked out but like it's embarrassing and i'm not going to forget it you know i'm not going to forget that they sent manny diaz as a scapegoat or whatever you want to call him on the road to try and recruit not telling him the truth or not telling him whatever and and these poor recruits were in limbo a week and a half before they're you know they call this a 40 year well, decision. this is a 40 year decision for these eight kids who were committed to the university of miami not to manny diaz to um and they're gonna bring in a new coach who may drop some of them um they don't know if manny's staying or going and i talk to these poor kids like that's my job and they're asking me what's going to happen to manny diaz and i'm like ask manny like i'm not going to tell them what i think it's not my job but right. the university has put me in this position and there's put these recruits these poor high school kids who are going to get a great education at miami but they may not still be invited to miami in a week and like it's not right and that's yeah, it's been said. messy it, it's been messy but i think i think you gotta look at why it's been messy i mean i think number one you have to respect if you're gonna make a move on the coach of another school and in this case um it would be the head coach at oregon you have to respect what they're playing for and if you look at the last couple of weeks i mean they, they they were playing to go to the college football playoff and um yes they blew that opportunity and and that went by the wayside but then they're playing to go to the conference championship game they win that game now they're in the conference championship game they're playing for their third straight pac-12 title and a berth in the rose bowl that is a big deal okay and 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 if you're the head coach which obviously mario cristobal is you're all in on winning that game tonight um number one you're still seething that this team that you're playing tonight utah like ruined your dream of going to the playoff and, com and competing for the national title uh that's number one so you're, you're seething about that and number two you're all in with your team you've recruited these kids you've developed them you've uh, you know worked your way through an entire season with them and you have to have integrity towards those kids now i know not I understand we're seeing every day that not every coach has that kind of integrity. We're looking at the way Brian Kelly left Notre Dame, the way Lincoln Riley left Oklahoma. I mean, not every coach operates with that kind of integrity. But um, I've known Mario Cristobal since he's 18 years old, and I can tell you one thing. That guy is all in on that game tonight. And he, if he, you know, he'll make his decision whether he's staying or, or leaving Oregon. Um, but if he were to leave, he wants to leave them on a high note. He wants to leave them going to the Rose Bowl. And he wants all the work that he's put in over four years uh, uh, at Oregon to have amounted to something. He's not worried, you know, about anything else. And um, that's the type of integrity I know that guy has. And um, so that's one reason why this would have played out the way it's played out in Miami. Oh, because, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, let me just say one last thing. Then, yeah. You, yeah, then you can weigh in. The minute that Miami fired Manny Diaz, I mean, he obviously was going to be spoken about all across the country as the top candidate for the job. I mean, I don't think that's a great secret. Um, so that would have totally polluted all the things uh, that I just mentioned. And then the other aspect would have been the possibility of Miami players uh, being recruited by other schools and fleeing to the transfer portal the minute of Manny Diaz firing was announced and um i think there would be a goal to give the new coach time to get in there and, and talk to the kids and try to um ward that off so to speak so i think those are the two reasons matt why this thing has played out potentially the way it has that would be my opinion okay well i mean yeah if you're worried about the transfer portal i somewhat get it but this is the university of miami this is not the university of oregon like Miami is letting the University of Oregon dictate and the University of Oregon's success and schedule dictate whether they fire Manny Diaz or not. Like, I don't agree with that personally. I, I, I mean, obviously you, you sort of see some value in that. To me, you know, what's most important and what they've always done at top universities, and this is the first time I've ever seen this happen at Miami ever. And we've seen a lot of coaching changes. Usually they fire the coach, they do a search. And in this case, it's okay, we're pretty sure we're gonna fire the coach, but let's let him keep coaching. We're pretty sure we want this guy over in Oregon, but he's still playing for a championship. So let's just hold on to our coach for a while, see if we can get the coach in Oregon. If not, maybe we'll keep this coach. Like, it's just wishy-washy to me. Like, I wish that it's, Miami it's showed, bad the for me. Resolve, showed the same resolve and made the same decisive decisions that other universities that have great alignment from the top to the bottom have made 
and, and like it's it, it's it's just wishy-washy to me and yeah it could or it, i think it'll all work out fine at the end of the day everything will look great but like i always say behind the curtain there's that wishy-washiness and and there are definitely um some issues with the way this has gone down like it, it's just a fact yeah i mean it's it's been bad for manny there's no doubt about it but uh you know maybe and i believe this to be true like if they can't land their top target the, you know i think that the the faction at the university that wants to let manny diaz come back next year will get their way i mean i don't know that they're going to do an open coaching search right now um you well, know that's, that's why i keep saying they needed to make the change when they needed to make the change <laughs> like well, no, listen, because, you and i both agree you both you and i both have agreed yeah. numerous times manny is not the answer to this program correct i don't think he could take it to the next level i don't think yeah. he's capable so we both of agree. Yeah. So why are they dragging it out because what we have plainly seen over the last three years certainly the administration knows and i don't care what politics are at play you're the president of the university you have two advisors who I would think would know the same thing we know and pretty much every other reporter I've talked to knows like so they're willing to do that for another year and do that to the fan base like it, it's that's why I say wishy-washy it's not okay well you know I mean I think we've you know like, we've got the possibility that's that's the problem yeah like, I as mean, slim as it might be the you know I come from the viewpoint of the last thing I would ever want to see University of Miami do right now is hire another average coach that can't move the needle and and yes, I know Lane Kiffin is sitting there in Oxford right now, only praying that Phil Knight blows up a potential Miami pursuit of Mario Cristobal because Lane Kiffin wants this job very badly. And he wants this to go to an open search because he would become the top candidate in that open search. Um, but there are a lot of fans would be excited by that, by the way. Yeah, and, and, and I think Lane could move the needle here a little bit. I don't know that there's anybody else, Matt, that can. And and if you're too scared and to look at okay, okay. Look at Brian Kelly. Like if Miami wants to be what we want them to be, they can poach another top coach. I don't care. If if all this is who's that top coach? That's what they're trying to do. Any top program, like what they did to Brian Kelly, just just But who's the next guy? Time. Lincoln That's Riley and Brian Kelly are off the board. Who are you gonna poach? Dabo? Are you gonna go to Clemson and poach Dabo? Not Dabo, but I, I would no, think who? who? Listen. I don't have a name in mind. No, but, you, and there is no name. Just, 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 like, just, just like LSU, you want to say Brian Kelly. I mean, it's just like it happened. Like, but I don't think top, Miami could have gotten Brian Kelly. No, but what I'm saying is there's top coaches that you wouldn't think of that you that maybe have a tie to Miami, maybe would love to try to rebuild Miami. Like, you don't know until you I think start there's Mario, I think there's Lane Kiffin. You throw the money out that's there, why, you don't know what you find. That's why those are the names being talked about the most. But if you're talking about and you look at the way coaching salaries have gone with and and you're looking at Lane Kiffin and you're going to have to offer him, you know, eight million a year for five years or whatever. You're going to have to make a forty million dollar gamble that Lane Kiffin is not going to flame out as your football coach. And you know, we're not going to go into all the things that have happened through his career. But I could see why Miami would not have an appetite for that when it also comes with twenty million in buyouts and things like that. So uh, they may have decided. But they want no part of that. Okay, so if if you don't get Mario and you want no part of Lane Kiffin, now you're in the pool with everybody. And and I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure I would disagree with a decision to punt in that scenario. Again, Miami has to get past this idea of we can only hire an available coach who's between jobs or an up and coming young guy who might be you know from a from a less prominent school like a Cincinnati or whatever. Like, no. Steal a coach who's been successful somewhere else by paying him more than that school wants to pay. Well, him. well that's what they're doing. That's what they're like you, doing. Mario and you, get, you know, they have supposedly they have all this money now. Like, let's use it. But that's what they're I, doing. Nope, not if they keep Manny for another year. Which no, no, they're know. trying to do that with Mario. I, they are trying to do with Mario do what it. USC okay. did with Lincoln Riley, what what LSU okay. did with Brian Kelly. Well, they are trying to do is, that with Mario. What I'm saying is, you, if you if for whatever reason Mario falls through, which hopefully and I don't think it will, but if it does. There should be a, another top guy you can get besides Lane Kiffin, you know, who who's already coaching at a top level. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I just don't know who that is. Right, we don't know because that's why these administrators are paid uh, a few dollars more than we are. You know, this is their job. This is going to go get their hundred, two hundred million dollars from you health. Like, go ahead, go ahead and spend it and make but, fans happy. But man. you're going to go do that to get, say, Dave Aranda at Baylor and gamble on that? No. 
what's that's my point like i you know i don't know man they got to get mario <laughs> let's put it that way if, if they if they can if they can't make this happen in the next 48 hours uh the whole situation becomes to me uh very problematic for miami um so you know we'll, we'll see what happens we'll be covering it hopefully all weekend and um you know, I, I, I guess we, you know, let's move move on from that for now. Um, but I, I mean, it's going to be a very interesting weekend in my, I th- I'm expecting a very interesting weekend. All right. So Matt, Twitter, let's talk about Twitter for a minute before we get to what we're really supposed to be here for, which is the news of the day. Oh, and I also want to point out to the fashion police that I am again wearing a college oh, shirt. Yeah, I am taking, I am taking the advice, and Matt is again. Who wears a college shirt in the morning? Matt, is, is this is Matt I was wearing a T-shirt, and I got ripped on on comments on YouTube. So you know, you know who wears college shirts in the morning is like eighty year olds who go to the early bird specials, man. That's me, baby, because I, you know, I, I'm I'm very sensitive, and I and I, and I get emotionally fragile when people are attacking me on YouTube. So Wait, I'm, I, a, that's not a college shirt. That's your pajamas. No, no, this is college shirt. This really pretty is. Sure it's a, pretty sure it's a pajama top. <laughs> don't show me your bottom. I, I don't care. I don't want this bottom. <laughs> All right, Twitter. I want to talk about Twitter for a minute. Um, my God, Matt. Uh, Twitter has been a nightmare the past week. Um, never in my life. I mean, you've got people out there, like, you'll put out a story and, like, Guys that like, I mean, I don't want to insult anybody, you know, but like, we'll start commenting about your story, like, like, like they know better or whatever. And it's just, it's so annoying. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is all these people commenting on Miami and wanting to just dump mud on Miami and how, what a mess the whole process at Miami has been. Let me tell you something. If they do land Mario Cristobal this weekend, and then next week they land a top flight athletic director, you tell me what's a mess, okay? A mess, please. Miami would have one of the best AD head coach combinations in the country, okay? So judge these guys when it's over. Judge the end game, in my opinion. So, yeah. listen, listen, if you if you take a bunch of cut up chicken and some leftover rice. And a few vegetables that you have leftovers on your counter, um, and you give them to a top chef, they're gonna make a great freaking meal out of it, but it doesn't mean you had great ingredients to start with. And like that's what we're looking at here. <laughs> Good point. But I mean, uh, listen, it, it hasn't been perfect. There's been a lot of leaks and all kinds of crazy crap going on. I know the board of trustees are divided. You know, they're they're gonna have to be be told to stand back and let us do our job. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think you got to judge the end result. And if they make this thing happen this weekend and then make a good AD hire happen, maybe like next week or something, uh, I think that's the time to judge. And I think you would have to judge that favorably. But, you know, I was getting fired up today. And, and I, you know, I finally, uh, Matt went over the edge. So I started firing off some tweets. And um, the, the, the first one was this one. The people calling the Miami searches a mess – are the people upset they aren't getting the jobs, which I think in, the, in some cases are true. Uh, certainly in the case of the athletic director at New Mexico, who might have actually had a chance to get the job, Matt, if he had just kept his mouth shut. And I still think he does have a chance to get the job if the search gets to him again, um, because he, he did impress people in some ways with some of the things he said. Um, but I point out there are some great candidates in the mix, which I know there are. Um, they're just not sending out tweets, which can't, which real candidates don't do. Um, and then I point out, and every board of trustees member can't have a seat at the table um, like like they all want. So that was tweet number one. And then I'm still fired up. So I go to tweet number two, which is about Jose Echevarria. Now, this is a guy, okay, that was a CEO of a massive company called Deloitte, okay? Um and was very successful in that job. Then he takes on the challenge of rescuing U Health. Okay, you you know Donna Shalala had made this huge investment in U Health, and it was floundering. the The hospital was losing money. Miami was looking like fools for going in the business. There was talk that Julio Frank was going to lose his job as president because of the way things were going, and and the way things were going with U Health was a big part of that. 
So they bring in Echeverria, who had just retired as the CEO of Deloitte, to try to rescue U Health. He takes a money losing proposition and in a, about a year turns it into an enterprise that's making more than $200 million, Matt. Okay. So I point that out in that tweet. If he can do all of that, if he could be a, a, a high flying CEO of a major corporation, I think Jose Echeverria can handle a freaking athletic director search in tandem with a professional search firm named Turnkey that handles these things every single year very, very capably, okay? And and these guys, they do a very thorough job. They do background searches. They sniff out candidates. They, they orchestrate interviews, things like that. They work with the university on refining the lists of targets and things like that. These guys are pros, okay? They know how to do searches, okay? So if you take Echeverria, uh, you know, I'll even leave Rudy Fernandez and I'll leave a couple other trustees that are on their committee out of the conversation. Let's just talk about Echeverria. If he can do all of that and he can turn around U Health, I feel fairly comfortable, Matt, that he can handle a coaching search. You agree or disagree? I agree. The problem okay. is it looks like amateur hour from the outside. But why? Why exactly? Because somebody's not handling a PR on their side, right? <laughs> you should be hired as their PR agent, guy. You know PR better than anybody. Well, he has a mistake. How has the PR agree. game? How has their PR game gone while well, he's done the search? Yeah. An F. You agree with that? Because there is no PR there. You know these other people. Here, are, here, like, here's the mistake. Like, they're right they're allowed to leak stuff out, but they can't leak stuff out. So like they can't even respond. Apparently, well, I, I think, think they did leak out last uh, two nights ago. Yeah, well, a little too late. That uh, what's his name Nunez up in New Mexico right. was no longer in the picture because right. I think they, got, little, they got a little tired. Like, uh, well, he was sucking like, up all the oxygen in the room, so they got tired of right. him. Right. right. But I will say this, Matt. Rudy Fernandez did make a mistake. I mean, he had no business be on Twitter. Uh, you know, trolling everybody that decides to like throw something out on Twitter and making comments and retweets and things like that, yeah. and having people yeah, read it with some with thumb pointing and finger. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It was weird. It was weird, and it was it was not real smart. Okay, I was surprised at that. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the PR the PR side has been terrible. The, the behind the scenes, I you know, I, I if they get the end result. Behind the scenes obviously went amazingly well, but I will never say the PR side of it and how they handled it PR wise was good because it's been just awful. I mean, yeah, they could they they could have just stayed off Twitter. Before. There was yeah, no reason for them to be on Twitter. Uh, coaching searches, athletic director searches, they're supposed to be anonymous exercises. Okay, the, the the people running the searches aren't supposed to be public figures while the searches are going on. Uh, they're supposed to do the, do the search quietly do the interviews quietly. People aren't really supposed to find out who the real candidates are. In fact, usually in searches, when you hear that somebody's a candidate over and over again, they're often not a candidate because- I'm I am a candidate after you said that. Yes, it's true, I am a candidate. <laughs> but Matt, I wasn't done. Then I sent out this one yeah. because the, the Board of Trustees has just been out of control, okay, through this. And they, it's time for them to stand down. And I, I said, now those trying to sabotage their efforts do need to stay out of the way and let them get to the finish line. And, and, I, and I feel strongly about that. You know, 66 trustees are not going to agree on what should be done, how it should be done. And you can't keep polluting the, the airwaves and, and the atmosphere with your own agendas um, if it's going to stand in the way of what ultimately really needs to be done for the betterment of the university. And I think they are trying to move in a direction that is for the betterment of the university. We'll see what happens this weekend. All right, Matt, uh, if you don't have anything else you want to weigh in on that subject, um, let's get to the news of the day. And, and the funny thing about the news of the day, guys, is that it's, you know, obviously right now it's centered on recruiting, but it's all going to be obsolete if, you know, if things blow up this weekend and, and it's, it's like, you know, we're doing the best we can. We're covering all these offers that are going out and all these visits that are taking place and things like that. And you'll, you know, you'll have all those stories on the website this morning and enjoy them, I'm sure. But like, it's all going out the window if something happens this weekend that we're anticipating. So um, we'll see what happens or uh, maybe Manny Diaz is told this weekend that he will be back. And then all the stories will hold up. So um, we've had to do business like it's business as usual. And so therefore, you had, you do have a lot of recruiting coverage this morning. I'll, I'll go through some of the things real quick here with Matt. Um, 
Chris Graves, Matt, to me is really one of the key recruits in this class. Uh, um, and, you know, there's been so much conjecture in really for a few months now. There was talk that he might flip to Florida. But Florida's not the only school trying to flip them. You got LSU trying to flip them. You got North Carolina trying to flip them. And all this certainty, uncertainty, rather, at Miami is not helping the situation with Chris Graves. And um, obviously, if Manny Diaz does get the vote of confidence that he will be back, Chris Graves will be a, a kid that, that absolutely will continue to get visits. He got a visit from the coaches um, on Thursday. And um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we're going to keep keeping an eye on Chris Graves no matter what happens here. But um, you, you, you got a story on Chris Graves and – uh, Matt, I think the one thing that came out clear from that story is that that this is going to be a hold your breath scenario for Miami all the way up to, de to December fifteenth. Yeah, and um, you know there there are some indications that he might take unofficial uh, un I can never say unofficial visit, not unofficial visit. He might take a official visit. I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> unofficial and uh, official. I can't say it. He might take a official visit, which sounds super weird. Um, this weekend, maybe even the weekend before signing day, you know, um, he's already taken officials to, uh, Florida and, um, what's the one else? I don't have it in front of me. I think the LSU, no, not LSU, Florida and who's the other one that's after him? North Carolina. Has he been to North Carolina? I can't remember. He has, but I don't, I'm not sure he's going to visit there. Florida, you know what? I can't, I'm not going to remember. But anyway, those two, right. those two major programs after him that visited this week, not North Carolina. And they both changed coaches. And so like, he's allowed to take officials to them again, even though he already took those official visits. So, um, and the same thing with Miami, like if, if, if by some miracle, Manny Diaz is replaced, <laughs> um, you know, like a Mario Cristobal, if by some miracle, Danny. some guy named Mario Cristobal takes the job, like every kid who ever took an official visit to Miami can take another official visit to Miami because that's just the way that the system works. Yeah. And it'll be a, it'll be a festival next, next week. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I'm not sure is if kids have, and, and those, most of these kids have not taken all five, but the only thing I'm not sure is if you already taken all five. I'm not sure if you'll have to take a six. I'd have to research that, but I don't think any there's really any case in that right now. So, um, so yeah, there might be more recruits on campus the final weekend of of, of uh, before signing day than there are students on the University of Miami campus. <laughs> so uh, that'll be interesting to see. We'll see what happens there. But um, but yeah, regarding Chris Graves, super concerned about him. Um, you know, he he's not graduating early. I don't know what his. I talked to his coach. His coach says all these other people have been telling him he's graduating early, right? And no, he's not. So he could wait till February if he really wanted to. Chris doesn't want to wait till February. Um, but right now, you know, I'd say 50-50, he sticks, you know. Um, he's not doing interviews. Always a bad sign when he's been super friendly with us. And all of a sudden, he's like, you know what? I'm not talking anymore. Um, so, you know, I, I honestly think 50-50, you know, could go either way. It really could. All right. Also a story on Landon Ibietta who met with Manny Diaz uh, this week. And uh, he also might wait till February now just to see how things shake out. I don't think he'll need to. I think he'll know what's up here pretty soon. But uh, well, he, guess what? He may be he may be in trouble. Him and, um, and believe it or not, Valencia Carswell are probably the two kids who feel like, just from talking to them and people around them, they're the two kids that feel most vulnerable in terms of if a new coach comes in, they may not keep me. Carswell, because he's a major project. Yeah, right? he's got, yeah, he's got no problems, I don't think. No, but well, he's got a lot of offers. Ibietta, I would be nervous. Yeah, well, I'm just telling you, Carswell is concerned. Okay, I'm just telling you, he is. Yeah. He's concerned a new coach won't want him. And that's why, that's primarily why he's talking to other programs. He loves Miami. He will come here no matter who the coach is, but he's checking out other programs because he's not sure any new coach is going to want him. You know, so that's why he's checking out the other programs. That's for Ibietta. He just, you know, he, um, he doesn't have a lot of major offers. You know, Tulane right now is probably his plan B, which shows you sort of where that's at. So, um, you know, there's some concern there. You know, my feeling about it always is it's a week before signing day, you know, a week and a half before signing day, you hire a new coach, you got to just take the kid and give him a chance to prove himself. Like the program, he committed to the program, the program should be committed to him regardless of who the coach is. That's not how it works. I feel bad for the kids. That's how it should be. All right. Uh, also, uh, a story. Um, we were joking the other day about Coach Hickson wanted to go out to Vegas and play craps, but uh, he did go out to Vegas. He did. And, and he, uh, I hope he won, Coach Hickson. I hope you crushed it at the craps table. Um, but he did also visit Javante Barnes while he was out there. And um, I heard he put money down on Manny Diaz not being retained. That's why. <laughs> 
I wonder if there. I wonder if anybody. I, I doubt anybody. Yeah. There's there should be a betting line. But um, yeah. So he went. So Coach Hickson went to Vegas to visit Javante Barnes, the running back out there, and uh, he's a long shot for the Canes, no doubt. But uh, sounds like he might visit if Manny Diaz sticks. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens there. Um, and then uh, also a story on the Georgia defensive tackle Quentel Jones, um, who's hearing quite a bit from Jess Simpson. So um, he's, we like give a, you- he's like a plan B right now in case something falls off. So yeah, like they're hoping to get some other kids. So we'll see what happens there. But you know, right now I don't. I would not. If Sunday was today, he would not have an offer. So <laughs> we'll see what they decide. All right. So you guys got all those stories to dig into. Um, but no lie, all the action is going to be on the message board in the war room. Uh, it's been pretty lit lately, and uh, I think it'll be pretty lit this weekend as well. And uh, we will try to keep everybody uh, very much up to date on everything going on uh, behind the scenes in this coaching situation that we think will come to a head uh, this weekend. So, Matt, uh, 50 minutes later, um, I, think wow. we've woke, I think we've woken everybody up. <laughs> 50 minutes is a record. I, I think everybody's awake and uh, awake. It's time for lunch. It, it's getting close, isn't it? Uh, so we're going to go and uh, we'll be around all weekend, obviously, uh, as news develops. So for Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. We thank everybody for joining us today on Good Morning Cane Sport. And uh, we'll see you when we see you, which might be sooner than later. Have a great day, everybody.